Donald Trump has caught the leaker, or a leaker. Maybe there's more than one. I honestly have no idea. But in the story of the New York Times, we learn that Madeline Westerhout is stepping down, and she has been with Trump since day one. I have to imagine a lot of people are heartbroken to, to, to discover that she was leaking private details about the administration and his family to the press. Now, here's what's really interesting about this. We'll go through the story. But what truly fascinated me when I heard is that just what, like two days ago, three, four days ago, Michael Knowles of the Daily Wire said, did Trump suggest nuking hurricanes to identify leakers where he believed the most likely scenario was that Trump was purposefully putting out ridiculous information to see who would share it? We'll, we'll, we'll get into this, but basically I made a video talking about the concept of coloring the water where when you have three cups and they're all full of water, and there's water at the bottom of each cup. You don't know which one's leaking. You put specific colors in each one, and then whatever color on the bottom, you know, emerges, you know where the leak came from. So the general idea is, did Trump purposefully say something ridiculous in front of this woman? That way, when it went to the press, he was like, it was her. Now, look, look, I don't want to play conspiracies here, or I don't know what's happening, but I got to say it is a tremendous coincidence that Michael Knowles was able to suggest this. And if, and, and at the very least, I will say this to you, Michael, if, if <laughs> we're, we know, just go buy a lottery ticket, go buy a lottery ticket right now, because if you were wrong, you, 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 you were, you, you guessed right. You know what I mean? Um, like it, the possibility that Trump wasn't intentionally doing it, but then here we go a few days later and the leaker has been outed. So, uh, Knowles nailed it. Whether, whether it is true or not, it was in the right direction. You know what I mean? I, I, whatever. Go buy a lottery ticket because you, you nailed those numbers. Well, let's read this story about Madeline Wester out. And uh, it's, it's actually, I got I to gotta admit, I'm, I'm sure there's probably a lot of people who are really sad to hear this because she's been with Trump for so long. Before we do, however, in the description below, there's a link for a new channel, Timcast IRL. That means in real life because my van is nearing completion and I will be traveling about the country doing, I, I, you know, honest, I, whatever. Who knows what I'll be doing? But it'll be a lot of behind the scenes footage. It'll be driving around. That's the goal for now. Subscribe to this channel. It's also a backup channel, but it's going to be more field reporting type stuff. If you like that, the link is in the description below. But let's read the news from the New York Times. President Trump's personal assistant, Madeline Westerhout, whose office sits in front of the Oval Office and who has served as the president's gatekeeper since day one of his administration, resigned on Thursday. Two people familiar with her exit said. Now, now, I don't know if these other anonymous sources or two people, are they, are there more leakers? Or is it, you know, it, I, I guess I, I'll say this. I have no idea how, how you get some people who can share information about what happened so that the New York Times knows without there being more leakers. Unless, of course, Trump said, hey, go tell the press. Ms. Westerhout's abrupt and unexpected departure came after Mr. Trump learned on Thursday that she had indis- indiscreetly, indiscreetly shared details about his family and the Oval Office operations she was part of at a recent off-the-record dinner with reporters staying at hotels near Bedminster, New Jersey during the president's working vacation, according to one of the people speaking on the condition of anonymity to discuss White House personnel issues. So it seems like there are still uh, more leakers. But again, again, it's possible that this anonymous source may have been authorized to do it, but it seems like this woman certainly wasn't. The breach of trust meant immediate action. Ms. Westerhout, one of the people familiar with her departure, said, was now considered a separated employee and would not be allowed to return to the White House on Friday. The White House did not respond to a request for comment. Mrs. Westerhout did not immediately respond to an email seeking comment. They say uh, Westerhout, a former Republican National Committee aide, also worked for Mitt Mitt Romney's 2012 presidential campaign, reportedly cried on election night because she was upset over Mr. Trump's victory. That's weird. Why hire her? As such, the president at first viewed her warily as, uh, as a late convert to his cause who could not be trusted. But some of Mr. Trump's top officials, like John F. Kelly, who has since left as chief of staff, tried to turn Ms. Westerhout into an ally who could help them manage Oval Office traffic. They hoped that she could block individuals from reaching the president on the phone or in person, and that she would report back on the calls and meetings that made it through. Ms. Westerhout's power in the White House came almost entirely from proximity. She is not a name brand White House aide and has never appeared on television, unless it was an accidental shot of her hovering behind her boss. While she, she was not a decision maker, she enjoyed unique access to Trump. So it would seem that they brought her in specifically to help with, you know, she has skills, right? But they were trying to convince her that it was the right thing to do. I got to say, I'm, this, it doesn't sound complete to me. Can, can, I, I don't, I can't imagine 
that the people in the White House were that stupid to bring on someone who cried when Trump won from day one, thinking that she would do a good job when in actuality, it seems like she may have been working against him this whole time. She, uh, they, they want to say, she also often shared snapshots, s- snapshots on her private Instagram account of her life in the West Wing, including travel to rallies and Trump properties. And in one post, she joked that she had been responsible for reprinting, for printing out a piece of paper that Mr. Trump held up and referred to at a public event. So she's out. I got to admit, it sounds like there's more leakers. You know, Trump has had a pretty rough administration with losing a lot of people. People have been quitting. People have been resigning. You end up with people like Scaramucci who worked there for what, like 11 days and then got fired because he started, I don't know. I don't know what the issue is, man. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll put it this way. I think the buck stops with the, uh, the, the, the buck stops with the authority figure. You know what I mean? For my company, when there's a problem, I take responsibility. So I'm going to say this. I have no problem saying I think Trump has a responsibility to, to bring on better staff and do a better job. But I will also admit, I find this kind of sad because it really seemed like Trump didn't trust her, but was willing to, you know, extend like an olive branch and give her an opportunity. And now it sounds like this whole time she had no interest in being loyal to the administration or to the president. That's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. I'm, I wonder uh, I wonder how Trump feels about it. I really do. I know the left will try and act like Trump is a callous and evil man, but you got to wonder if this woman who is sitting outside his office for several years now, and then it turns out she was the one or at least one of the people leaking information, that's a bit of a bummer. But I want to highlight this so I can, uh, <laughs> can give props to Michael Knowles because, you know, right now the, the Madeline, what, what was Madeline Westerhouse, uh, Westerhout is trending on Twitter. And I thought, okay, you know, like, what's the big news, right? She resigned. But it's this. If you're not familiar, Trump nuking the hurricane thing is one of the stupidest stories I've ever heard. And that may be intentional. It may, it may be intentionally stupid. Axios published a story where they said Trump entertained the idea of nuking a hurricane before it formed. Now, a lot of people have asked that question. And I will say this. I don't think it's a stupid question. I just, you know, think the average person doesn't understand how, hurricane, how, how hurricanes work or that they're actually the, the size of like states. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot to consider. And most people, uh, I think, would overestimate the power of a nuclear weapon or actually in many circumstances underestimate. But the point is, I'm not surprised someone like Trump, who doesn't know much about, you know, the, the, the blast yield of a nuclear bomb or the formation of a hurricane would suggest. Is that possible? But the story is stupid because it shouldn't be news in the first place. Who cares? Unless Trump was purposefully trying to find a juicy story that they, he knew the media would latch onto. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, you know, I really don't believe... Well, actually, you know, I was going to say, I don't think it's, I don't think it's true. I, don't, I can't call Michael Knowles wrong, though. So here's what he said. Michael said, uh, there's three possibilities. The media lied. Trump actually said it. Or Trump is trying, uh, let me just read it. He said, the third possibility seems most likely that Trump raised the strange idea to ferret out leakers. For years, the president has inveighed against leakers as traitors and cowards, vowing to find out who they are. How could a disgruntled staffer resist spilling news of a prospective nuclear attack on storm clouds? Just this past February, the White House suffered its worst leak yet when a staffer sent the president's private schedules to journalists. Is it mere coincidence that Axios broke that story as well? Maybe not. The president has a leaker on his hands. Perhaps his nuclear rhetoric targets not any sensational deluge, but the steady drip, drip, drip of damaging press. I still have an optimism bias, right? That, that I can't imagine Trump actually planned this out and it worked. But when I see, you know, I, I can say at the very least, good guess on Michael Knowles' part that this may be the intention and it may just appear this way. It may be entirely coincidental that Trump, you know, that, that, that the story came out and then this person got, uh, uh, you know, forced out because she was leaking. But we don't know if the story is true or fake, right? That's the, that's the most important thing. Did Trump really offer to, to nuke a, a hurricane? Maybe he did. Axios claims he did. They, they say they have a source. But it's also possible and considering the leaker was just outed that the Daily Wire nailed it, that Trump purposefully put out this ridiculous story, said something ridiculous, conveyed it to his assistant who may have overheard, and there it was. And the people he was talking to, he knew were loyal. So when the story came out, that's the only person it could have been. Now, I will add a little, uh, a little fun addendum to this video, but we'll wrap it up soon, in that April Ryan suggested, uh, I'm going to, we're, we're going there. 
She suggests CNN had a segment where they suggested Trump wanted to nuke hurricanes because they form near Africa. That's, that's where we are as a nation. First of all, why, Axios, did you think it was newsworthy to talk about Trump nuking a hurricane? <laughs> I don't care. It's a dumb story. But anything to make the president look stupid. In reality, it may have been 4D chess. I, you know, there's a lot of people who go back and forth on whether or not Trump is playing 4D chess, which is a joke based on 3D chess, which is chess with three, bo- like it's like an extra dimension. And then 4D chess is like through time and space, I guess. But you know what? This doesn't prove anything, but it'll absolutely fuel the fans of Trump saying, we know Trump is playing this game. We know he's doing this. And I got to admit, I'm curious as, like when I read the story from, from Michael Knowles, I didn't understand why he thought that was most likely that Trump was trying to weed out leakers. And I, lo- I love the concept of coloring the water because it's, it's such a cool visual analogy that you can easily understand. But then it happens. So I'll, I'll, I'll say there are going to be a lot, they're going to, they're going to, there will be a lot of coincidence theorists who are just going to say, you know, it has nothing to do with each other. But I think if people are readers of the Daily Wire, they're going to say, dude called it. Dude called it straight up. So anyway, uh, j- just to end on that last point about CNN, we have a media that wants to put out ridiculous stories. After the ridiculous story comes out, you get someone claiming that Trump is targeting Africa and it's the most insane thing ever. And it's possible that Trump understands. Well, oh, no, 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 hold on. Trump does understand that. He knows absolutely what the media is all about. He plays them like a fiddle. And that's why I start looking at this and I'm going, did Trump do this on purpose? I know he plays the media like a fiddle. I made several videos about it where I got tricked. There was a thing where, you know, he was arguing with the squad and he put out these tweets about going back to their countries. And I was like, ah, oh, you know what, man? This is exactly what I'm talking about with Trump's rhetoric. And, and, and it is. I don't like the rhetoric. But then later I realized what he did. He forced the Democrats to rally around the far left, damaging their image. It was clever. He knew the media would take the bait and it worked. If that's true, and even Ezra Klein of Vox said Trump does this, then I got to lean towards Daily Wire was right. Trump knows a ridiculous story will get picked up in the press. He seeds ridiculous stories to select people when the ridiculous, you know, so he's got ridiculous story one, two, and three. And when ridiculous story two pops up, he says, that was you. So, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I don't, don't want to make this super long. I'll, I'll end by saying, if Trump really does know how to play the media, and that's been his career for a long time, I think it's easier to believe that this, this story about the hurricanes or, or, or some story was put out on purpose because he found the leaker and she's out. Stick around. Next segment will be coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then.